question is that the notice of motion is moved by the member for Upper Hunter be agreed to. I call the Minister for Emergency Services, Veteran Affairs and member for Balcombe Hills. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Um, whilst I stand here as the Minister for Emergency Services, having uh, spent my second and third week in the role uh, working alongside the SES and the RFS and other emergency service agencies, and particularly the communities of the Hunter Valley, can I pause to get the House to, to seek the House's indulgence to just make one observation about why I, uh, I'm quite taken by the devastating losses in the Hunter Valley. Mr Acting Speaker, this is a multicultural society. Australia had, however, the first culture was its Indigenous peoples. And one of the great things that Indigenous peoples gave us was the whole notion of sacred sites. You don't have to be an Aboriginal Australian to have a sacred site. For me, as the member for Cessnock knows, uh, my sacred site is the Hunter Valley. My great-grandfather and great-great-uncle joined the military from Cessnock, they were coal miners up there. My wife and I spent a lot of time at Cess in um, Port Stephen. So being part of and seeing the devastation of the 2015 storms was particularly devastating for my own family. My father spent a week without power, uh, so those who have lobbied me about power rest assured that I get it from six in the morning to 10 at night from my own father. And this loss affected so many families that it will take quite some time uh, to recover. The loss, of course, is even more devastating for the member for the Upper Hunter who had a loss of life. And, and as I've said to communities right across the Hunter, we can replace <coughs> the roads, we can replace the houses, we can even replace the food. We can't replace the people. Uh, and so if this one thing that we get, one lesson we take away from these storms is mitigation is very, very important. And there is a Productivity Commission report uh, which uh, is looking into that. Uh, it is very, very courageous, to borrow a phrase, uh, but we do need to make sure that in any way possible we mitigate any loss of life in the future as a result of natural disaster. Mr. Mr Deputy Speaker, I, I offer up to the House some vital statistics because even though they're numbers, they do reflect, I think appropriately, the energy and the effort and the mateship and support that was offered to the community in 2015 in the Hunter Valley. 21,500 requests for assistance, 5,000 triple O calls, 170 flood rescues. And when you consider that a flood rescue is a dangerous operation, and it's an operation that has been undertaken by a volunteer in the SES, we have people out there in Australia that are prepared to risk their own lives without any thought of compensation or reward to save somebody else, and 170 of those occasions occurred in 2015. And if we think about Anzac Day, and I, I more than anybody am so sad to hear that so many communities lost the opportunity to commemorate Anzac Day, but they had their own Anzac Day 170 times in the Hunter Valley. Because of 170 times in the Hunter Valley, we had Australians prepared to risk their own lives to assist their friends and neighbours. Mr Acting Speaker, Mr Deputy Speaker, there, are, there, are, there is support on offer. Most importantly, we will be highlighting to the communities of the Hunter Valley that we are there for them to provide counselling, but also financial support. There, were, there will be loans, there will be assistance, there will be grants, uh, there will be opportunities for councils to uh, uh, access money. Mr Acting Speaker, four minutes is never going to be enough to display my gratitude and thanks to the people of the Hunter Valley. They are, we are surrounding them with a wall of prayers and support and we will get through this and make the Hunter Valley an even better place to live.